station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. Nantucket New School, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Lisa Solomon with students from Nantucket New School. <coughs> How do you hear me? How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Great to be I hear you loud and clear. Great to be with you today. Thanks, Shane. I am Lisa Solomon, second grade teacher from the Nantucket New School. And I'm here with teachers Rachel Sullivan and Liz Hilger in the back of the room. And we have our second and fifth grade students from Nantucket New School, along with some invited guests here at the Nantucket Athenaeum in Nantucket. It's our library. And we have parents of these students upstairs. We also have the rest of our school watching back in our school. And lots of people all over the island watching the event live and as well as across the country. <laughs> we know you're probably in good spirits with the recent West Point win over Navy in the recent football team game. So with that, I give you to the students. All right, thanks. It is great to be with you. And of course, it was great to see Army beat Navy. We got to watch that live up here. So that was really fun. Hi, I'm Evie. How old were you when you decided you wanted to become an astronaut? Evie, I was uh, much younger than you. I was around five or six years old at the time. Uh, that's when a lot of the Apollo astronauts were launching and landing on the moon. And uh, once I saw that, it really inspired me to want to do something like that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Evie. Why did you want to go to space? And do you want to go again after the trip? Very good question. Um, the reason I want to go to space is it's it's such an adventure, and I think all of us uh, at some level have an adventurous heart, and we want to do things that people have never done before, uh, find out things that never people have never found out before, and that's part of this process. So we're up here um, doing a lot of science and research that may not help us, um, but it will help people like you maybe down the road. So it's kind of cool to be a part of something that big and something that unique, and of course it's a really neat environment to live and work um, and to answer your second question, um, I'd love to go back, um, but I certainly want to see my other colleagues who haven't flown in space before um, fly before I get to do it again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Henry. On your trip up to the space station, you have to sit in your seat the whole ride without getting up. That's a good question. So we were on the Soyuz, which is a Russian spacecraft. We had three of us in this really tiny vehicle all crammed in there. And you do sit in your seat for a long time, but thank goodness not the whole time, because it took us a little over two days to get to the space station. Uh, we did sit in our seats for, I don't know, maybe five, six hours um, before we were allowed to kind of get out and get out of our spacesuits and uh, get in more comfortable clothes for a little while until we got close to the space station. Hi, I'm Victoria. How does the rocket find the space station and, not, and line up precisely so it can attach? Well, we have a lot of computers, of course, and sensors on board the spacecraft, and we have a lot of satellites that we use also. Uh, but really, the, the meat of that is all the people on the ground in the mission control centers make sure that we're in the right place and we're going in the right uh, the right path to get to where we're supposed to go. Um, and they, you know, they're kind of watching over us, thank goodness, uh, to make sure that the crew maybe doesn't do anything wrong. But in general, just to make sure we're on the right path. Um, all the sensors and all the satellites are telling us that we're where we're supposed to be. And by doing that and firing our engines every now and then, um, it allows us to line up um, exactly, precisely, like you mentioned, to get to our destination, which in this case is the space station. Hi, I'm Griffin, and what was the worst and what was the best experience you have had in space? Wow, the worst, we've had so many great experiences, uh, but maybe the worst is when we when our bathroom broke. That was a really bad deal because we had a leak in the, in the bathroom system, and uh, that was definitely probably the worst thing so far that's happened. 
Um, the best thing has been my crewmates. Um, I had three crewmates when I got here, and they left shortly after we arrived, and now we've um, gotten three more. And just the pleasure of working with them every day and learning from them and just being a, a part of that team has been really fun. Thank you. I cannot play electrical guitar. I played the trumpet when I was uh, back in middle school, uh, but that's about it to my musical talents. There are some instruments on board. There is a guitar, there's a keyboard that I know about, and I think I heard there was a flute as well. So there are some musically talented astronauts. I just don't happen to be one of them. Hi, I'm Nathaniel. What's your favorite experiment that you're working on right now? We have a lot of experiments that we're kind of doing on our own bodies. Those are kind of unique and very cool. Um, I think that the one, my favorite right now is I'm getting to grow lettuce in space. Uh, so I've been doing that for about five to six weeks, I think, so far. And a few weeks ago, we got to harvest the lettuce and uh, eat that for dinner one night. So that was awesome. It's still growing. So actually tomorrow is our second harvest. So we're gonna have some lettuce for dinner tomorrow night, uh, which is a rare treat up here. So we're looking forward to that. Hi, I'm Lila. Do you get bored in space? And if so, what do you do? Yeah, you might think you get bored up here for five or six months, however long your mission is, but I haven't been bored yet. Uh, we've been working really hard and uh, doing great as a team, getting through a lot of our tasks and actually getting ahead on other tasks um, that are coming up in the future. We're just doing those ahead of time. And so that's keeping us busy during the normal work day. And then in the evenings, we get together for dinners, um, have a good time just enjoying each other's company. One of our favorite things to do while we're up here in our free time is just look out the window at our beautiful planet Earth um, and look at things like the supermoon you may have seen over the last few days. Um, really, really spectacular from our vantage point. Um, we also have TV shows that, that we can get sent up to us and movies to watch. Um, if you want, if you have some other free time and want to do those things. Uh, but in general, we don't get bored. Um, there's a lot to do, and there's always um, science and research. There's always taking pictures out the window as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Claudius. Do you have any disputes with your teammates on the spacecraft? And if so, what are they about and how do you solve them? Could you repeat that question? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Do you have any disputes with your teammates on the spacecraft? And if so, what are they and how do you solve them? I kind of mentioned a little, little bit before, I'm very fortunate to have incredible crewmates and we all get along and we've trained for a couple of years now together prior to the mission. So you really get to know each other. Uh, and so far, we haven't had any disputes. I think when you're, when you're in the spacecraft, maybe uh, the thing, if, if an emergency situation came up, that could potentially be called a dispute, but we are all trained very well to follow the procedures. Um, and there's somebody, the commander is always the one in charge uh, on the space station here, that's me. So if something were to happen, then I, I would be directing the rest of the team on getting through the procedure and solving the problem that we had. Hi, my name is Nico. Have you ever seen a meteor from the space station? I am looking forward to seeing a meteor, hopefully one time when I'm in the window. So far, I have not seen one. Uh, the coolest thing I think I've seen out the window was a thing called an aurora. Uh, over the North Atlantic one night we were looking through the window and it's this beautiful green kind of uh, hazy glow that uh, is on part of the the curvature of the earth it's just spectacular so i was lucky enough to see that but hopefully i'll get to see a meteor before i get home hi my name is hannah what is the most challenging thing you have to do in space <laughs> 
Very good question. Um, I think physically challenging would probably be spacewalks, and we're getting ready to do some of those here just after the, the new year comes. January 6th and January 13th right now are our planned spacewalks. So that's really physically challenging in this big spacesuit that weighs about 250 to 300 pounds on Earth. Up here it doesn't weigh anything, but it's still a big mass we have to, to move around. Uh, and, and actually work against the pressure of that spacesuit for about six or seven hours. So physically, that's probably the most demanding thing. Um, and sometimes when, when major systems on board break, those become very challenging um, days or maybe a couple days for the whole crew in order to repair maybe the oxygen uh, generation assembly machine or the bathroom, like I mentioned before. Um, so you never know what's going to be challenging, and uh, hopefully uh, very few things like that will break, but we've had a few of those already. Hi, my name is Tom. What does the supermoon look like from space? It looks spectacular, and we've been lucky enough to, to get out in the windows a few times over the last few days to look at it. Uh, one of my crewmates, Thomas Pesquet, took some amazing pictures last night of the supermoon and uh, they're all over social media so if you have access to that or your parents do you can ask them to look it up and take a look at some of the pictures uh, of the supermoon from the space station. Hi, I'm Rita. What souvenirs would you like to bring home for yourself and your family? Uh, did you ask what souvenirs I would like to have? Was that yeah. the question? I'm sorry. What souvenirs? Yeah. Yes, that is the question. Um, yes, that is the question. Okay, so I, I was able to bring uh, several things with me from friends and family members, um, things like you know pictures of my family, which are put up in my little um, bedroom, but it's kind of like a miniature closet where we sleep. Um, I also have things from my favorite sports teams and my schools that I went to, like T-shirts or jerseys or hats things like that and souvenirs from uh, my favorite uh, sports organizations. So uh, it, it kind of makes it a little more like home when you have things like that. And I look forward to presenting some of those things back to the people that allowed me to fly them when I get home. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Rowan. What planet would you most like to go to and why? Wow, that's a great question. So we have never been to another planet as human beings yet. Uh, right now, we're really working hard to try to get to Mars here in the next few decades. So when you folks are, you know, in your 20s and 30s, hopefully we'll be sending uh, human beings to Mars, which is the first planet besides Earth that uh, humans have been on. So that'll be a really cool endeavor. And maybe it'll be some of you that get to do that for the first time. I'll be definitely too old by then, but uh, maybe some of you will be uh, young astronauts and being on your way to Mars. Um, right now, of course, since we can't get there uh, and I'm out in space, my favorite planet to go to uh, would be Earth. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back to Earth and enjoying my friends and family. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marley. Is there something about being in space that you dislike and wish you could change? Wow, that's a, that's a good one. I think if I could change something about this whole uh, very cool experience is if I could bring my family with me so that they could experience with me. Um, uh, we all miss our families and friends when we're up here, but it would be really cool to have them here. Um, and so if there's one thing I could change, that would be it. Hi, I'm Grace. Have you ever had a space headache? And what do they feel like and how long do they last? I'm actually, that's one of the experiments I'm working on is this uh, experiment called Space Headaches. Uh, I had a few um, shortly after I arrived, uh, but really haven't had any since. And they felt, you know, just like a headache on Earth. There was very, really nothing different. Um, I think the first few days I took some, uh, something like Advil or ibuprofen to take care of it. And after, you know, a few hours, just like on Earth, it went away. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Aiden. What is your favorite fitness exercise in space and why? Uh, my favorite exercise, well, we have some great, great machines on board here, and I'll just mention the, the three main ones we have. We have a stationary bike, which is just to my left. You, you probably can't see it too well. We have a treadmill called T2, and we have a weightlifting machine that allows us to really do some amazing things like squats, bench press, shoulder press, curls, um, anything you can imagine and do on Earth, this one machine does. And that's my favorite, um, just because it really makes you feel like you had a great workout. Uh, and you build your strength, you continue to have your, your muscle mass and your bone mass and bone density, which if we didn't exercise up here, that kind of stuff would deteriorate. So I like that machine, and it's called ARED, which stands for Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bailey. Are there skills you use as a sports coach that you use at the space station? Well, you can probably think of a couple. Um, teamwork is a huge thing up here. Uh, we as a crew of six on board right now are one team, but really the team is much bigger than that. All the mission control centers around the world are supporting us, and they're all part of this team too. So just having that experience of being a coach and trying to get a team together and get headed in one direction uh, with, a, with a common goal is uh, part, of my, part of my mission up here to make sure that our team is in sync with all the mission control centers on the ground to make sure that we're accomplishing the tasks that they would like us to do. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of those traits and sports have, have really carried over in all assets of my life as I've gone through different phases. Um, so sports is a wonderful thing, I think, from that respect. Thank you. Hi, I'm Denzel. Do you like all this space food? If not, what is your favorite and least favorite? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your question. Could you repeat it again? Do you like all of the space food? And is there one that you like best and one that you like least? I've been very impressed with our with our food. It's uh, much different than the first time I flew. It's really improved, and uh, we have so many great items and a lot of variety. I think variety is the key. Otherwise, you know, if you just keep eating the same thing over and over, everybody gets sick of it, whether you're in space or on the Earth. So we're very fortunate. Um, we have a lot of great food. I think one of my favorites is a thing called chicken strips and salsa. So it's uh, it comes in a pouch, and you heat it up and you can put it on a tortilla and it's like having tacos so I enjoy that. Um, we have Russian food that our Russian colleagues have um, in their segment mainly and we'll have usually once or twice a week we'll have dinner down there and get to enjoy some of their food uh, which is really good and it's just always different um, from the food that we have so it's nice just to have a little more variety. Thank you. Hi. I'm Anson. Have you ever run out of necessities? If so, what do you do when you run out of them? Well, that's a great question, and it's something that, that the people on the ground and in the Mission Control Centers really track to make sure that we're not going to run out of the stuff that we really have to have. Uh, we have cargo vehicles that show up uh, hopefully three or four or five times a year that bring us a lot of supplies. Um, and actually one just showed up two days ago, uh, one of the Japanese vehicles called the HTV. It showed up and it brought us a lot of goodies. Um, of course, it brought us a lot of supplies for the space station. Um, it brought us a lot of equipment and experiments that we're gonna work on over the next several months. Uh, but it also brought us some fresh food. So we actually had some apples and some oranges on board that never tasted better, I think. It's been a while since we had fresh food, so um, that was a real great surprise. And this one also brought some Christmas presents from our family, so it was a really awesome thing to open up this vehicle the other day and then and find all these goodies in there for the crew. Thank you. Hi, Shane. I'm Rachel Sullivan, and on behalf of the Nantucket New School, Nantucket Island, and the rest of us here on Earth, we want to thank you for keeping the dream alive and we wish you and your crew a, a successful mission and a safe journey home. Well, thank you. It's been an honor to be with your school today. <laughs> thank you.
station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants and guests from Nantucket New School. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.